Imagine standing before a sunset, the skies on fire with gold and crimson. You feel something. You're in total awe. Do you feel peace? Maybe you even feel love. But pause. Is that beauty real? Or is it a trick of the brain? An evolutionary illusion designed to help us survive, reproduce, and conform. And more importantly, is there a formula? An actual mathematical pattern that defines what we all call beautiful? Or are you simply reacting to programming you never chose? Beauty has long been a subject of fascination and debate, captivating the minds of people across different eras and cultures. Philosophers, artists, and scientists have all pondered its essence, each bringing their unique perspectives to the table. Is beauty an objective truth, or is it shaped by societal influences and personal experiences? This question has persisted through time, reflecting the complexity of human perception and the evolving nature of beauty standards. Some argue that beauty is a universal concept rooted in symmetry and harmony, while others see it as a construct of cultural and social norms that vary widely. The debate over beauty's nature is not just academic, it has real-world implications. It influences personal identity, societal values, and even our interactions with one another. Beauty affects how individuals see themselves and others, impacting self-esteem and social dynamics. Beauty has been a companion of civilization from the very beginning. From cave paintings to marble sculptures, from starlit poetry to quantum diagrams, We've tried to bottle it, sell it, worship it, but we've never tamed it. Plato believed beauty was not subjective, but absolute, an eternal divine form. Aristotle thought beauty came from balance and proportion. But fast forward to today, and evolutionary biology tells a different story. Beauty, it says, is functional, survival-oriented. Symmetry often a sign of health and good genes. Harmony, a pattern your brain can predict and relax into. So, is beauty just a neurological shortcut? By exploring different viewpoints, we can better understand this multifaceted concept and its implications. The aim is to determine whether beauty is an inherent truth or a brainwashed illusion. A question that continues to intrigue and inspire. Throughout history, beauty standards have evolved significantly, reflecting the values and beliefs of different cultures and eras. Ancient civilizations like Greece and Egypt had specific ideals that were deeply rooted in their philosophies and daily lives. For the Greeks, symmetry and proportion were key elements of beauty representing a harmonious balance that was thought to reflect inner virtue. Their sculptures reflect this belief, emphasizing harmony and balance in every detail, from the curvature of muscles to the alignment of facial features. In contrast, ancient Egyptians valued youth and smooth skin as seen in their art and hieroglyphs. Their beauty ideals were closely tied to notions of fertility and divine favor. During the Renaissance, beauty was linked to divine perfection, with artists striving to capture the essence of the divine in human form. Artists like Leonardo da Vinci explored human anatomy in great detail to capture ideal forms believing that understanding the human body was key to depicting divine beauty. The Vitruvian Man is a testament to this pursuit of perfection, illustrating the blend of art and science in the quest for ideal proportions. In this era, beauty was seen as a reflection of God's creation, and this religious influence shaped societal norms and artistic expressions profoundly. 
making beauty a spiritual pursuit as much as an aesthetic one. In the 20th century, beauty standards shifted with changing cultural dynamics reflecting the rapid social changes of the times. The flapper style of the 1920s, with its emphasis on slenderness and modernity, contrasted sharply with the curvier figures that were celebrated in the 1950s. Each era's beauty ideals reflect broader societal changes, from the liberation movements of the 20s to the post-war optimism of the 50s. These historical shifts demonstrate that beauty is not static but dynamic and culturally influenced, constantly evolving with the times and reflecting the ever-changing human experience. Enter math. One of the most elegant theories in this space is the golden ratio, phi equals 1.618. This number shows up in flower petals, hurricanes, nautilus shells, and even the layout of the Parthenon. Leonardo da Vinci used it in the Vitruvian Man. Modern designers use it in logos, layouts, and product design. And yet, ask yourself, does the universe truly obey this ratio, or do we just like seeing patterns that make us feel safe? Here's where we start building a new idea. Beauty as a function. What if beauty is not a fixed trait, but a function? Something calculated deep inside the subconscious. Beauty might emerge when just the right balance is struck. Between order and chaos, between symmetry and asymmetry, between truth and surprise. Think about music. Too predictable and it's boring. Too chaotic and it's noise. The sweet spot? That's beauty. Think about people. A perfectly symmetrical face feels uncanny, but add one unexpected dimple and it lights up the whole picture. It's in that tension between the expected and the unexpected that beauty lives. Now here's the real twist. If beauty is mathematical, shouldn't it be universal? But we know this isn't true. One culture praises pale skin, another celebrates deep melanin. One adores slender figures, another honors curves. Even AI, when trained to detect beauty, begins to favor certain features. But it's not discovering truth. It's reflecting our own biases. So maybe, what we call beauty is a mirror, not of nature, but of ourselves, our environment, our history, our trauma our politics. That's what writes the algorithm we now call taste. Your brain loves beauty. When you see something beautiful, your reward system activates. Your orbitofrontal cortex, insula and amygdala start firing. You get a hit of dopamine, oxytocin, even endorphins. But this system is also manipulated. A like on social media, a carefully edited photo, a designer handbag, it triggers the same chemicals. So, are you truly in love with beauty? Or are you in love with the chemistry of approval? Maybe beauty isn't enlightenment. Maybe it's addiction with better marketing. There's another lens. The Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi. It tells us to see beauty in imperfection, impermanence, and simplicity. Not symmetry. Not perfection, but authenticity. The chipped mug, the scarred hand, the moment that can't be repeated. Maybe beauty isn't something you find, it's something you allow. And maybe the most beautiful thing in the world is you when you stop trying to be beautiful. So ask yourself, when you say something is beautiful, are you seeing the universe as it truly is? Or just the reflection of your own training, trauma, and culture? And here's the question I leave you with. If beauty is a formula, who's writing the equation? <laughs>